In this video, we're going to look at how we can define and apply section properties and material properties to a newly created model. For section properties, we can actually define multiple sections that can be used in our model. And these sections can be defined by ourselves. They can be imported from different international steel databases. There are also ways of combining or defining custom sections using built-in tools in S-Frame. Or for even more power, you can use our other product called S-Calc, which is for cross-sectional property calculations of any shape. And more details are available on this from our website. And we also have a YouTube playlist dedicated specifically to S-Calc if you're curious. Now with section properties, as we already saw in some previous videos, it's important that uh, we have control over the orientation of our member. If we want the flanges to be going in a certain direction, we have to keep that in mind uh, when we're applying our geometry. And this all relates back to the local coordinate system that we talked about in an earlier video. It also helps uh, increase the accuracy of our model if we have accurate material models. So we have the ability to quickly and easily define accurate material behavior. And we can choose from existing materials or create our own. And if necessary, you can even go into more detail and define nonlinear material properties using built-in hysteretic models. So I'm starting off with the model that we worked on in the last example. Uh, this is the frame that I created. And right now in our model, if we look at the section properties tool, we don't actually have any sections here yet. Once we do add sections to our model, they will be added to our members as well. But right now, this legend window that appears here is completely blank. And if you can't see this window, just make sure that this rainbow button toggle at the bottom is toggled on. If it's toggled off, I won't see it there. But if I toggle it on, I can see it. And this is where our sections will be shown. So I'm going to right click on the section properties tool. And I'm going to start by importing some sections from the steel model database. I'm going to press on the steel button. And this will import sections from a steel database of my choosing. So on the left hand side here, we have a number of different shapes that we can work with uh, I beams, channels, T's, double angles, and so on. And at the top of the screen, we also have our steel table. So we can choose from different steel tables. And within that, there's a number of different sections. So I'm just going to look for uh, sections that work for me. And you can choose whichever one you like. I'm going to look for a W460 by 61 section. And this is it right here. We can see all of the section properties have been imported from the steel table, as well as the dimensions. And I'm going to add it to my model into the local database by pressing the Add To button. So now that model has been brought from the Greater Steel database, the CISC database, into my local database. I'm going to add one more section. This is going to be a channel. So I'm going to change to the channel sections by clicking this channel shape. And I'm going to choose a C100 by 11 section, which is right here. Again, I can see all the dimensions and the section properties, and then click Add To to add it to my model. And then I can press OK. And now I'm into my local section database. And here, I can assign different colors to each section so that I can differentiate them. And I can also, again, see their section properties. Once I'm done, I press Close. And you can see by default, it's going to assign section one to all the members first because every section or every member has to have a section. But we can change that afterwards. You notice in this window here that now I have both sections listed and they each have a colored box next to its name. If I want to highlight a specific section, I just left click on the colored box next to its name and it will highlight the text. So I've highlighted section number one. And if I want to highlight section number two, I left click on the box next to section two. And I'm going to assign this channel section to my beam. So I just have to left click on the beam to apply that section. Now, if we wanted to actually see what these sections look like on our members, we can use the render model button again. That we saw earlier, I'm going to right click on this toggle. And I'm going to toggle on the rendering of the model and I'm going to make some transparency. It's just a personal preference. And I just generally stick with the length shrink factor of 
So I'll press OK. And you can see the length shrink factor is basically just saying that 75% of the length of the member is going to be just shown as the actual line itself. The rest will be the actual rendered section. Just helps me identify where my joints are. So those are our members and our section properties. Now let's look at material properties. If I right click or left click, sorry, on the material properties tool, I have a larger legend that appears with a number of different materials. And you can see that conveniently, a steel material has been assigned to all of my members. That's material number one. Now I can right click on this material properties tool and drag this over, and I can see the different properties that represent each material. So for my steel US and Canada material, I have my Young's modulus, shear modulus, force density, and temperature coefficient all going into the definition of this model. And I have several other materials. If I want to create a new one, I can click the Add button, and it will create a new one as well. And just like before, if I wanted to change the material, I could, for example, switch from material 1 to material 2 by left-clicking the colored box next to the name of the material. It will highlight that material and I can left click and drag my mouse around the members I want to apply it to. However, I'm going to stick with material number one. So left click next to material one and left click and drag my mouse to apply those material properties.